Welcome back to the game programming series. Um, we are continuing our work on our uh, game loop. And in the last episode, we did a deep dive into uh, the more advanced functionality of the game loop. And we're going to work towards that situation in the next couple of episodes. Um, but right now, before we do any of that, what I'd like to start doing is I'm going to clean up this code a bit. Or actually, what I'm uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all of the logic back into the main loop for now. Uh, this makes it a bit easier to experiment. Um, uh, we have less um, um, objects that we need to instantiate and uh, uh, put data on and stuff like that. So we're just going to, so for example, this rendering here, we're just going to move it in here. And so instead of having a loop here, we'll just create a block and we'll add a comment, which it says uh, render. And we'll just do the rendering in there. And so we'll do the same for uh, the uh, update block. And so we can actually remove all of this. And we're actually not doing anything in the update block right now. So we can just leave it empty, which makes it a bit easier as well. And so this stick, so we need some information uh, that, we're, that we're going to need to set in the... Um, in the loop itself. So first of all, so I'm wondering if we even need this screen for now. We could just, let's just see if we can get away with just doing some printing. So this, this can be gone. We can remove this part. We don't want to init initialize a game loop. For now, we're just going to uh, loop for, um, let's see, make it a hundred times. Um, now what else? So we do need to have this information here. So basically we want to set a timer. And so we'll say, uh, for starters, we'll say, we'll have a, uh, let's see, a, Last run duration, which is a instant now. And so in here, we'll actually do this. Right, so we'll probably call it something else. Makes it a bit easier. So we'll remove this game look here. So just say, we'll just call this a timer for now. So we'll remove this. We can remove the whole game loop here. Also remove the renderer. So all of this is gone. Now we'll just have a main. Makes it a bit easier to understand what's happening. Um, so we're also for now we're not doing anything with the screen anymore. We're just going to say print a lamb uh, last tick duration in milliseconds equals to duration. We can remove this part. Oh, this actually. This as well. Now, obviously, we still need the duration. So, where where do we actually get the duration from? Uh, let's just quickly see. It's the it's just the last run duration, right? Yeah. All right. So this will become the. Last uh, run duration and this is in and so now if we run this so basically we still we almost have the same as we had last time so we are going to um, change this to to make it loop 10 times. <clears throat> and so now we can see um, the uh, increment, increment. So the duration, let's see. Right, so as you can see, the duration is somewhere between 100 and 
104, 105. So there's there's some variation there. Uh, it's not exact. Uh, even if we put this to one, we would still get. Oh, actually, yeah, apparently. It's interesting that the higher it, I guess it makes sense because yeah, so you can see you can start to see some variation there. Um, so okay, so this greatly simplifies the code, of course, uh, but it also makes it easier for now to actually start working with it. So we're no longer using this. Uh, we're not using the duration. We can actually remove the time here. Is we're not using time right. <clears throat> like this. Okay, and so this is our greatly simplified loop. And now we're going to actually work on um, implementing the um, well, first of all, I think we're going to um, print some more information and after we've done that we are going to decouple the update loop from the render loop now we do still need um, the update loop to actually do something for now so let's say um, update duration is Update. Sleep update. Let's call it sleep update. Is four and sleep render is also four. So this will be sleep render, and then here we'll actually. Okay, and so this will be sleep duration, uh, no, sleep update. And now, <coughs> now you can see we're sleeping twice as long, obviously. And so we're going to uh, change this a bit, just to give, give some sense of what, what's happening. And so <coughs> you can still see the last take takes the addition of sleep duration and rendering and so it takes a, it should take 11 milliseconds it varies a bit because the sleep isn't as accurate um, and not only that I guess if we I think if we um, uh, sorry. So let's put it like this so we've got the cargo run and if we do cargo uh, build production uh, release and now if you go to target release pocket watch yeah it still varies it still varies so it's not so it is now I guess it's because of the variation in the time that the uh, thread actually sleeps which is fine which is fine for now, uh, but we can just run in um, in debug mode for now. So so we've got a sleep for update, we've got a sleep for reminder, uh, for render. Um, and so we can actually do the um, printing out here. And now uh, let's make this into, uh, so we've got tick duration. Well, I think we should just combine some stuff on one line. So that we have some sense of what's happening. So we could say um, take duration, then we get some value. We add to that the frames per second and the update per second. And so and now so, so now we need to calculate the frames at the base per second. Um, and so 
let frames per second is the for now it's the milliseconds, so a thousand milliseconds divided by the last run duration, and basically the. Um, around so that they're actually in order and so basically this is um, right yeah so the last run duration can be zero and actually it is zero on the first run because we get the value here yeah so we need to, so I wonder, like in reality, this this never happens. So, so what I was, what I'm wondering is, can we create a non-zero value from this? Now, obviously that value can be zero, but can we do some kind of... The value must be... Right. So we could do a new end check from a U128, but then the value has to be... has to be non-zero, which, which obviously makes sense. So in this case, the last run duration elapsed is actually so I guess timer actually in this case timer returns a duration, right? Or what does now return in this case? Now returns an instant. And can we We can only get an instant of now. Check at. Okay. Now oh, it is a night Leone and we're on the stable right now. And it's too bad. Because this would have allowed us to actually add a value to the timer. Because we only the first run it will be zero. Now, I'm not sure if that's actually entirely true. I mean, theoretically, you could get a, a, a zero uh, time difference. So we could just say, for now at least, um, uh, here we could say, if last run duration is zero, then uh, last run duration is one. So this would have to become mutable. <coughs> and so if we run this, so now we can see the frames per second. And the first one is, is obviously a thousand because it's just, uh, there hasn't been any duration yet. So it's just um, the highest value that can be. Now, or maybe we should just ignore printing altogether because the only, let's leave it like it is for now. Let's leave it. Now, what I'm wondering is the updates per second is based on the millisecond duration. And I wonder if we have more pre precision. Would we actually get uh, more detailed information? So now we got, we're gonna have nanoseconds. So now we need to uh, think this is the amount, right? So the tick duration, <clears throat> right? The tick duration is in in um, in, nano, in um, nanoseconds now, instead of milliseconds. 
And so we could divide it by, uh, let's see if we divide it by, um, so this would, <coughs> this would bring us back to, uh, two milliseconds. And now what we want is, We add a flow to this, right? And so we would say uh, right. And so now we actually see more than just a milliseconds. Now we do want, I think it's just something like this. Yeah. So this makes sense. So now we get a bit more detailed information than just the, uh, the milliseconds. And the updates per second is now based on the nanosecond, so it's more, uh, it's more accurate. Um, we might actually do the same for updates per second here as well. could say something like um, doesn't make sense no maybe it doesn't let's just leave it as is for now so now we see the updates per second and frame second and obviously they are uh, exactly the same because we use this we are using the same variable and um, uh, that's that's also entirely reasonable because they are just um, following each other up. And so now we're going to look into actually making the update or decoupling the update from the rendering. And in order to do that, we need a couple of things. Uh, first of all, let's see, we need, um, so we need to track the amount of, let's see, so what we want here, let's do, just do it in here for now. Uh, no, actually, we need to do it before that. So while, so we're going to, <clears throat> we want to hit 100 updates per second. Um, and so that means, uh, well, so let's put it a different way. We want to update the time, the game time in increments of 10 milliseconds. And so we are, we're saying if the last run duration Is uh, is higher equal to so ten milliseconds would be this. For now, we'll just go. We'll continue to go with nanoseconds. So we can remove this. So the update ha actually happens inside the while loop, but the, the while loop isn't part of the update normally. So normally, we, you would. Let's make this a bit more clear. So normally you would go um, and here you would normally call something like this. <clears throat> and yeah, so and now what we need to do here is we need to say, well, the last run duration we want to decrement it by that same amount. And what we can say instead, we can actually, <clears throat> we can add another value here. We can say the um, time step Well, we could say the target update per second is 100. And so, uh, let's 
see. No, it's egg up and say. Uh, okay, I lost my train of thought here. Where, where, where was I going with this? So you are decreasing the last run duration. Now, <clears throat> obviously that means that down here it would be, uh, would always be the same value. So what we actually want is, we want a copy of this value for us to use. Um, but there's one thing, right, so what we what we do need to keep track of is the accumulated time that we are using. Um, because if you look, if you uh, watch, watch the previous episode, <clears throat> if we decrement the time by uh, 10 milliseconds, um, but we had 12 milliseconds of time to catch up, then we still have those two milliseconds that we need to, that we need to carry over to the next loop. And so we'll call this, um, I don't know, accumulator or uh, yeah, let's call it accumulated is zero. And so uh, the accumulated becomes, let's see, So the last run duration is some value. Let me just quickly, don't really like having to, um, and so we'll do milliseconds times so we'll do just do here so this is 10 um, same here U 128. Okay, well, let's make it a U 128 for now, then. We'll see. Okay, and so if the last run duration is larger than 10 milliseconds, then we actually subtract, um, then we run the update loop. And we subtract those 10 milliseconds from the last run duration. And we keep we keep running the cycle until we've starved the available time that we have to catch up to the now time. And once we do that, we need to actually uh, uh, update the accumulated time with the remaining last run duration. Now we are printing the last run duration here, and so we don't. Well, we could actually just we could just move this here and assign these variables here. Uh, same for this one. So we would say something like that tick uh, duration is. And so we would call this tick duration something like this and so this is configuration and this is just some values that we're setting so if we run this we obviously still get the same output which is as expected um, and um, what we can do now is if we this is the update sleep, and if the random sleep is actually, let's see if we put this to 14, for example, or let's make it 17. So what happens now? Right, we're still printing the same value. So what we need to do now is we need to actually, <clears throat> the frames per second is no longer the same as updates per second. 
And so we need to do something with um, let mute updates per tick. And so for every run that we do here, we increment it by one. And then up here, we um, set it to zero again. Oh, well, actually down here. And so now that we know the updates per tick, we can actually, uh, let's see, Let's change this to uh, we can't, I guess. Oh, we can. Okay. No, we can't. Uh, is this updates per tick? It's not mutable. Oh wait, this needs to be like this. Okay. And now. So we've got the updates per tick here. And so instead of just taking the last run duration, I guess we actually need to divide it by the number of updates that we did. Because otherwise it's just the cycle itself. And or we need to multiply we need to multiply this value by the amount of um, So this multiplied by uh, updates per tick would be the actual um, updates per second that we're achieving. Because now we have a, a difference in, um, now we, we are running, because the, the sleep update is two milliseconds and the sleep render is 70 milliseconds. So in total, that's about 19. And so we should see uh, the last run duration running multiple times. So if you were to actually do a print LN here, we were to print this out, we can see it runs the update multiple times. Now, and if we were to change this back to uh, seven, for example, they should be in lockstep again because they are actually uh, both uh, okay, so I made a mistake somewhere there, uh, but they are both. Um, oh, actually, we are. Well, actually, they should run. So what should happen is definitely that the update should trigger because last update. Duration needs to be larger than 10, but the last update duration is actually um, uh, Sorry last run duration It should actually be the remaining value is added to accumulated Which it is But the accumulated is Right, so the we should check for the accumulated here. And that then also means that we need to add. So we need to add it there. So we should probably. This is the last run duration. This is the tick duration. And so let's see, we need to add the last run duration to the accumulator but where is the best place to do that can we just add it here add the nanoseconds to the accumulated and then use it throughout the function let's see so then we would have no because the tick duration would then uh, also include the remaining from the last the tick before that's not what we want but we can, so this can actually become non-mutable. And then we say accumulated 
the last renderation is added to the accumulated. I can actually do this here. And then as long as accumulated is bigger than 10 milliseconds, we'll do this. We'll also decrement this. And finally we add, um, and then actually we don't need to do this anymore. So we can just And so I can remove this. Right. So now we are, so it, it runs once. Now it's still interesting that these are counted as zero. Even though it ran the update. So I'm doing something wrong here. Let's see. So the first three steps, and that's because it's well, actually it makes the first three. Yeah, does that make sense? So the first one, it makes sense because it hasn't reached 10 by that time. Well, the first one. The first one is zero. I'm not sure why the frames per second is so high, but we'll get to that later. So the first one is zero because um, because the duration is just uh, almost uh, zero. Then the second one is zero because the duration was eight milliseconds, about eight milliseconds, as you can see here. And so it didn't run the updater because there wasn't enough uh, accumulated time. So again, it has to have 10 milliseconds in the accumulated time to actually run the updater. And the second time, so what we probably want is, so we want, let's say, uh, let's call this tick in milliseconds, and then we'll say accumulated in milliseconds is something, and then we have the UPS. And so the accumulated is accumulated. Uh, this is uh, nanoseconds, so we'll see what comes out of this. And let's just quickly disable this so we get a better overview. Yeah, so this is the nanoseconds. Mm. And so what we need to do here is we, first of all, we'll just for now, we'll simply divide this by um, this amount. And so now we have accumulated in milliseconds. Well, actually, let's do the same as we do here. And also round off to three digits now I do want to figure out how to do the uh, print formatting I know it's possible I just don't know the uh, the syntax to to, uh, to have it properly aligned so it's easier to read but for now this is fine so what's interesting here is after the first one we have seven milliseconds accumulated and after this one we have six so that means that actually um, an update cycle ran, it just doesn't show the update per second. So where is the issue that we're seeing? And we can actually see that if we print the uh, ran update, um, and so let's, let's make this a bit nicer as well. Uh, let's call it updates. Updates. That should be fine. And so we'll say, we'll do something like update count. And so we're going to count how many updates we did. So instead of doing actually printing, we're just going to say update count incremented as well. And we have the updates per tick, right? Actually, we could just use the updates per tick. 
I didn't realize you already have this. So we can do the remove the update count. And so we'll just say updates per tick. But now that I think about it, I think one thing that that's at issue here is that we I think it's because we're using the last run's value for the update per second and the frames per second. And we're using the current run value for uh, for the other uh, values. Well, the tick duration is also for the, let's see, tick duration is also for the last run. And then, uh, and this, all right, so updates per tick is also for the last run. So we need to actually, yeah, so update per, updates per tick is reset here. So what we need here is let updates per tick is updates per tick. And so we'll use UPT here. And same for this. Um, what is this? This was the uh, accumulated. I'll just do something like this for now. And so where was it? It was the, this value. So now we are using all the right values of the old, of the previous run, right? So we set the updates per tick to whatever it was in the run before. We set the frames per second to the last run duration, which we haven't altered here yet. Uh, actually, they're all not mutable. And the updates per second is similar. And the accumulated time is also taken from whatever it currently is. And it's going to change down here, but that's we're not using that value. Um, and so let's the tick duration where is let's move this here and so this is the tick duration right um let's make this make, make the naming a bit better The other ones are pretty clear, I think. So, but I still see some issues here. So, the ticks per second are in milliseconds, and then the accumulated. So, the accumulated, the second time accumulated to run, it's still fairly low. Right, so here it's zero. That makes sense. We haven't accumulated anything yet. And then in the next run, the accumulated time is uh, so accumulated is zero. Then we start a run. So the accumulated at start is zero here. And then we continue to run. But what I would expect to happen, where does, where does the, um, 0 0.4 comes from the tick time of the first run. Yeah, so that's... So we set the timer here for the next run. Then we start to do all the sleeping and stuff. The accumulated is... We increment the accumulated by, the, by adding the last run duration. All right, so that's where the 0 0.4 is coming from. So that's this. Uh, so sorry, that's, that's this accumulated here. So that makes sense. And then after that, the uh, it actually ran. Then it took nine milliseconds, but since nine is still lower than 10, we don't do, an, uh, there's another run without actually updating something. And then after that we add 
uh, 7 milliseconds to that, and so we get 16, and so then we can subtract subtract 10 from that, so we do one update, and we get 6 milliseconds. Right, and so the updates per second uh, is kept at around 100 updates per second. Um, it varies a bit, because sometimes it can actually, uh, it accumulates uh, it doesn't always accumulate exactly 10 milliseconds and so sometimes there's some residue that it just keeps track of for the next run uh, but over overall if you take if you would take an average of all these runs you would get um, you would get the uh, uh, rounded you would get 100 updates per second right and so I guess what actually makes sense here is not to show the um, updates per second and frames per second in this run, but actually to show it after we're done. And in order to do that, we need to total time. Well, we can actually total time, we can just, um, we can just add the values, I guess. So we could say, for example, total time at last run duration to that. And we'll just keep incrementing this. And so then down here, we would actually, after the loop, we would print some, some, some general statistics. And so we could say, Updates per second is, uh, oh, let's leave it as is for now, and frames per second is also some value. And so we need to calculate these values. And so what do we want to do here? So we've got total time. I guess we need more than just the total time. We also need the total amount of updates that we ran. And similarly, total updates and total renders. And so the um, here we would actually say total updates, updates per tick. can actually move this up here if you want to because we've recorded it and so for every <clears throat> and here we would just say for every uh, total renders would just be an increment of one and then we basically do the same as before where we just but now instead of using the per run duration we use the total uh, let's call it total duration in, in, a, in a bit total duration and the um, times the total updates and this would be times the I'm not quite sure if this is correct but we'll see total renders so we'll say total time total time becomes total updates uh, total duration and right let's see what what this gives us did I I did not reverse them, so and we do right. So we do actually um, because we didn't. So we did do two updates here, but we didn't do any updates here, and so and they are fairly in lockstep except for here, as you can see, where we have double the amount of UPS because we do two updates uh, versus one render. And so this makes sense, but I guess this is just because of uh, rounding. 
Um, so if we were to increase this uh, this number to 100, we would get closer to the 100 updates per second. Or we would get close to zero. <laughs> Either works. Um, so what, why, does, why does this happen? So updates per second, <clears throat> almost always one, sometimes two when accumulated, when it has accumulated enough. Um, this, this value is weird. Mm, let's see. We don't need brackets here. Why did we get this value? Total duration is in. Total duration is in, uh, just increments the last run duration, right, in nanoseconds. So it just continuously increments. Then the total updates is the updates per tick, which gets incremented here. So every time this runs, so sometimes this is too, um, most of the time this is one and sometimes it's zero. That's fine as well. And then uh, accumulated, so we add last run duration to that. Can we see some weird outcomes here? I don't think we can actually. It must be in my calculation that something is wrong. But I'm not seeing what it is. I'm thinking a thousand milliseconds. Because we want to have these updates per second. Oh wait, we do need uh, we need this one here. Right? No. Okay. <clears throat> But we do want the total duration times the total updates. Actually, let's just print the total updates to start with. So let's see what this value gives us back. 102, and that's, yeah, that, that makes sense. Because we have one other, uh, we have a loop of 100 times, and then sometimes the, uh, and the, apparently one time the update was executed twice, or actually probably uh, it was executed twice, a couple of times, and then the first three, three times there was no update at all. And so the uh, rendering uh, is at, well, and we actually have, one hundred one runs, so now we actually have the one hundred runs, and so right. So this makes sense. Um, so that's correct, as far as I can see. And uh, now what? What else? So we've got the total duration. Right, and so that's the um, the nanoseconds. So we'll go to milliseconds. So that's about a second. Mm, right, so that's about a second. So, uh, 
let's see. Doing something wrong here. So the The total milliseconds. So that's the total duration. So when we say uh, total updates. So this, right, so this is actually this value. So total milliseconds is a thousand, and the total updates was one hundred, and so. I'm totally blanking out here. Um, so we have, let's see. We want to know the updates per second. So the amount of updates that ran in one second. We know how long it ran, which is the total duration which is in um, nanoseconds. So the amount of updates it ran per second is dividing that total so if total duration was say 10 milliseconds and we went we ran well, let's say if total duration is a thousand milliseconds and we ran two, we have total updates of two, then we want the outcome to be two. And so um, we would do a total duration divided by thousand milliseconds times uh, total updates. And so that's what we're, uh, so total duration divided by um, this one All right, so this is what we wanted. So we need to divide the total duration by a thousand milliseconds instead of the other way around, um, which makes sense. Um, so, and so the update per second is 102 because we did, uh, so this, this is almost, um, maybe we should just, uh, not sure what the, Um, so, so this is the updates per millisecond. And can we then say something like this? So this needs to actually uh, 
uh, right, so we need to do um, So we're actually getting a, we want this to be an F64, I think. Right, and so this one needs also needs to be an F64. And now the other one doesn't need to be there. And this then gives us, right, like this. And finally, let's see, uh, we go back to the seconds. And so now we get uh, the amount of updates with a higher precision. Um, although I guess, yeah, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, Let's just keep it at the simple updates per second for now. Uh, except that we do need this value. Okay, and so now, uh, so both of them are 100 updates per second now. And if we actually change this, so if we change this to 17, for example, we would see. And so I think the next step would be to make this random. Um, but if we change this to 17, we would see that the updates per second is higher than the frames per second uh, because it does two or more updates per second. Some, so because this is so close to 20 um, it uh, and because of the variance we see, it, as you can see, it, uh, well, actually it's, it's just, it's basically just incrementing it. And so it's two, three, then, uh, so, so here it goes minus 10 again, so it is minus 20. So minus 30 so it does two and then it increments it again and it goes back to three and so you can see it going between the two here and so yeah so this gives us some information uh we've now we've decoupled the um we've decoupled the updater and so as a final exercise we can actually go to let's see we want a random number and after that we will uh, we'll wrap this up uh, and in the next episode we will clean this up a bit and then start separating it out again into um, into the the interface that we actually want and so basically we just want um, okay so we yeah we might well let's leave it in for let's leave it in for now And what we basically want is we just want to get a random number. Let's see. What is what was the interface again? Let's look in the book for the most simple um, implementation. Right. So we want we want a random number generator, and then we just want a number. Okay. Random immediately. Okay, that's interesting. So we'll just we'll add the prelude here, and now we do want to to uh, get a value in a range, right? So this one gen range. Let's see. Yeah, so we will instantiate a random number generator. And then after that, we will do a, um, we will get from a range of numbers, the value. And so now we actually, so this can be between one and seven, that's fine. And, uh, this can be between, I don't know, five and 
30. Oh. And so this the this one can be higher than seven for now at least because we haven't implemented the uh, guard where we actually bail out if we if we loop too many times because say if this was actually 11 uh, then we would never go below the uh, the accumulated value um, uh, below the, uh, the the threshold of 10 milliseconds so we do need this for now um, we do need this to be below uh, below 10 uh, but the other one can go as high as low as we want and eventually we will make we will add this and that's something i will do in the next episode as well we will add this uh, this check here to make sure that it doesn't go um that it bails out after five runs for example and we'll we'll see the effect of that uh, so let's see what happens if we run this so now we can see it varies and all right so we do have a um so it is updating um as you can see, sometimes it updates four times, some days it updates a single time. Um, and we accumulate values and then we reduce them again. Um, and so, yeah, and so we have the, the tick time, which is sometimes rather high. And sometimes it's just relatively small, like this one. Uh, we do want to, again, create some nice columns here. We'll do that in the next time. Uh, and there is still an issue that I'm doing with calculations. I'm just totally messing this up here. Because, uh, well, either I'm doing something wrong here. Or I'm doing something wrong somewhere else. Because we should see it try to get to... Um, well, actually, no, this is not true. We... Uh, we are incrementing in steps of 10 milliseconds, but we haven't set uh, and we haven't set anywhere that we're actually want to update at 100 updates per second. We just increment by 10 milliseconds and that's it. And so this accumulator and also this one is uh, as you can see the update per second here is 205. Now, there are two concepts that I, that I need to keep apart from each other. There is the game time that we have, and there is the, the real time that we're advancing. And the, the, um, the sleep that we're doing here is actually um, the real time that we're sleeping in the game. This is actually the, the real time that it takes for this this uh, a simulated action that ha that happens in the update and a simulated action that happens in the rendering. We do correctly add the updates per tick. And what we actually might want to do is we might want to. Maybe we should just move this down there. Let's see. So if we were to move the same thing for this one, because now it regenerates a value for every loop instead of just once. Um, not that it matters that much, but it, maybe it's a bit more simulating the real life a bit better because the obviously the updating would vary between updates instead of just for one loop always being exactly the same and let's see yeah all right so i'm going to put a cut in here um i am going to continue with this uh with where we left off now uh and i think um in between episodes i might commit something or maybe i will just do it at the start of the next episode we'll see uh but for now we uh we got a, uh, got a nice chunk of work done uh we uh we are printing some debug statements we we have the loop in this uh we have the game loop in this in this main function for now which makes it easily parsable um 
we decoupled the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the updater from the renderer. And so now the updater can run whenever, um, uh, if it needs to run more than once, it can do that now before it, it hands it over to the renderer again. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure, first of all, that all, all our math is correct. We're going to limit the, the run to be 100. Uh, we're going to limit, limit the updater to uh, be exactly 100 updates per second. Um, and then we're going to also implement the bailout where if, if, it's take, if it takes too long, we, uh, we just abort and we basically slow down the game. Um, so that's in the next episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it's, um, it takes a bit of time, obviously, and obviously I'm also still learning. So uh, there are some, uh, some things that I'm probably missing or that took me a, a, a bit longer than it should have to fix. But um, I'm definitely learning from this and I hope you are too. Um, so hopefully I will see you again in the next episode.